Calgary Start Mall is one of Christchurch's main tourist attractions. It's one of the few places in the city where you're bound to see people who all look different. Different accents, different colours, different backgrounds. There's a huge amount of individualism on display, but despite this, one group of people are attracting more attention than most. Let's meet them and find out why. It's Sunday mid-morning. Tourists and locals are out for lunch and a spot of shopping at Restart Mall. Trying to blend into the crowd are Eden Thompson and his friend Daniel Thomas. As people walk past, some turn to take a second look. It's not surprising. The two friends do stand out. They're covered in tattoos and piercings and other body modifications. The stairs are a factor of their lifestyle. It's the price they pay for their pursuit of individuality. Meet 30-year-old Eden, who has completely transformed his body. This is how he looked before his first modification. He's had piercings, tattoos, the list goes on. Uh, starting from the head, I've got, I've got six implants in my head, three on each side. I've got a transdermal implant here, which is uh, similar to this, only it protrudes through the skin and you can thread things into it. Uh, I've got bridge piercings, a high nostril piercing. Uh, I've got my lips scalpeled, uh, my tongue split and I've got nipple piercings, I've got subdermal implants in my arm. Daniel has also split his tongue and has a range of different modifications. In the case of both men, their parents were against the idea of modification from the beginning. Finally they let me get my ears and my eyebrow pierced and they're like, nothing more until you're 18. I think I had about 20 piercings before I was 18. <laughs> the tongue split was a big issue, his parents weren't too keen on the idea. They just told me I was a bit of an idiot, but um, it's something that they've known has been on the cards since I was quite young, so nothing really shocks them anymore. Society in general seems to frown upon people who look different. Eden and Daniel have met people who aren't fans of their look. I describe it as amazing and beautiful, and the public probably are disgusted. <laughs> now that's not true, I don't know. I don't... I don't know, most people are curious and interested about it. Both men are so heavily tattooed, they're almost like a walking patchwork quilt. Daniel's body is covered in artwork from different countries. Just wherever I go, I like to grab a few tattoos and it's just a little, it's a bit of a picture book. Um, artists that I've been looking up to for a long time. Some people like to buy art for their walls, I like to buy it for my arms. Which brings us to Left Hand Path. It's one of a growing number of tattoo parlours in Christchurch. I want to find out how popular tattoos are and how much they'll set you back. 28-year-old Jamie Watt only started getting tattoos two years ago, but already he's addicted. Jamie spent thousands of dollars on his hobby and wants to cover most of his body. It's definitely worth it because you've got it for the rest of your life. It's, it's not like a car that you might only have for a year and then you don't have it, so you're always going to have it with you. This latest design is his baby daughter's zodiac sign. Kieran Fenson has been tattooing Cantabrians for about five years. It's just an obsession for mine from childhood. Um, a lot of people say that, but it was for me, I was always drawing and sticking on tattoos from as long as I can remember, really. He says with the influx of tradesmen to help with the rebuild, business has been taking off. Tattoos in general can start from anywhere from 50 bucks to 20, 30,000, you know. Um, it's like asking how much is a black car. Pain levels fluctuate as well. Everyone's different. You get some people that can sit for 10 hours on their ribs and not even flinch, and then others that sit for half an hour. Daniel has spent thousands of dollars to achieve his look of tattoos, piercings and modifications. He arrived in New Zealand just before Christmas, but Eden is a Christchurch local and his appearance has made him well known to many people. You're going to get asked questions looking like this, that would be kind of silly of me to be upset and offended. But there are of course ways and means to go about asking someone something about the way you look. Uh, just coming up and touching me is about as polite as me coming up and touching you. <laughs> so, do you yeah. get that? Do oh get yeah, that? all the time. People are like, oh they're already doing it and they're like, do you mind? And I'm like, you're already doing it. I wouldn't recommend doing that, but he did invite me to touch his implants. Does it hurt at all? Uh, not doing that, but sometimes if I bang it or what have you, it can get a little bit tender. Yeah, but uh, no, just generally like this, no, it doesn't hurt at all. And here we go now. Visually, the tongue split is the most interesting. Worldwide, it's a relatively new concept. There are several thousand people who have gone through the painful procedure. 
Eden estimates about half a dozen New Zealanders have been brave enough to get it done. It was, yeah, it was pretty horrible. Uh, healing it was not very fun at all. Um, yeah, it's sort of the worst 10 days of my life. What was the most painful modification? Oh, definitely my tongue. Um, the, the actual procedure wasn't that bad, but oh my God, I couldn't eat for a week. The Bible refers to the devil having a forked tongue, but these two just think it looks and feels cool. It's just, it feels comfortable. It's the way that I feel like it should be. Um, it's fun to play with. It's kind of, it gives a little bit of a laugh. Um, when people see it, they're like, whoa, I've never seen that before. Of course, with these or any modifications, there will be health risks. One of Canterbury's top doctors, Alistair Humphrey, says as long as people make sure anything they're putting into their body is sterile, he has no problem with any modification. I have seen many examples of even small implants, things like a nose stud, a belly button ring, they can get infected. Of course they can if they're not put in properly. What about implants like horns or tongue splits? These are messy and painful procedures. A backyard job is not recommended. It is a fairly major um, operation to split someone's tongue. You need to be absolutely sure that there aren't going to be adverse consequences from that. Your infection control needs to be good as a surgeon's in an operating theatre, I would suggest. Both Eden and Daniel are trained piercers and they know how careful you need to be. They work at Absolution, a tattoo and piercing shop inside Wollstone's Tannery Mall. Today Nicole's choosing a new ear piercing to add to her small collection. Daniel's been piercing people for eight years. He loves his job and the enjoyment his clients get. You can see that in their face when they leave, you know, they're happy, they can see that they've got something that's a little bit, a little bit more special. The beauty of piercings is that they don't have to be permanent. I think a lot of people like them because you can take them out. There's not quite the, the same permanency of a tattoo. Even though you're still going to get a little bit of scarring, it's not quite the same as a tattoo. Costs vary, of course, as do the pain levels, depending on the type of piercing. Nicole loved hers. It didn't even hurt. Oh, look at that. It's cute. Touch. Sorry. <laughs> This won't be her last one. She has a bit of a fascination with modifications. It looks pretty, it's, it's enjoyable, and that's really what it is, I think. Nicole might seem like a novice, but she's not. The 25-year-old already has several tattoos and piercings. She's also tried an extreme sport, with a history spanning thousands of years. Coming up, we see Nicole take her love of piercings to new heights. When you're coming up, that will hurt the most, and then when you're up, it'll just be amazing. Hopefully, that's what I'm hoping. In a Rickerton studio, a group of friends are ready for the ultimate high. Daniel and Eden are preparing the room for what's known as flesh suspension. This is the 5,000 year old art of attaching ropes to piercings. Suspendees dangle from the ceiling like a puppet on a string. When Eden founded his skin dependent crew in 2008, it was the first group of its kind in the country. Since then, suspension's taken off, attracting a small band of followers. After six months of watching the pros at work, Nicole's trying suspension for the first time. And every time you see someone do it for the first time, they just look really excited and they have such a lovely time, they come there with big smiles on their faces, so that's pretty much, pretty much, if you see that, you're like, yeah, I'm going to try this. Travis is also mentally preparing himself for his first suspension. He's been wanting to try this for more than a decade. Yeah, it's a pretty big moment. It's like, yeah, you know, 10 years of it, having that deeper interest in it and now being able to do it is um, it's quite an amazing feeling. Alice is no newbie. This is the ninth time she's been up in the air. You've got adrenaline junkies. They go on a motorbike and wherever do heavy jumps and big jumps and all of those things. And this is kind of the same thing. It's only we do it in a different way. The hooks used for each suspension are long, sharp and thick. They're intimidating. But Nicole isn't worried about the pain of the piercings. When you're coming up, that will hurt the most. And then when you're up, it'll just be amazing. Hopefully, that's what I'm hoping. Travis isn't concerned either. Uh, it's a degree of pushing my limits. Um, I want to see how far I can push mind and body. 
I've got a fairly high pain threshold, so again that comes into it, you know, I want to push past that again. Nicole feels nothing as the hooks are pushed through in two sharp movements. Oh, that was fine. Good stuff. It didn't hurt us at all, like, I'm really surprised. I was, yeah, that was great. Do it again. Yeah, y'all. Alice's piercing is more extreme. Her position means hooks will need to go in both her back and knees. Daniel takes a quick break to show me another modification. This comes in handy as a piercer. He's had a magnet inserted inside one of his fingers. How awesome is that? <laughs> um, yeah, it's my favourite little trick. Also, it's great because when it goes through magnetic fields, it will sort of give a vibrating, tingly feeling. So I can always feel when I'm in a magnetic field or when the microwave's going and stuff like that. It's a cool feeling. As we rejoin the group, Nicole's preparing for liftoff. Do you feel a bit like a puppet right now? Um, oh, no, I don't feel like a puppet, but I, I do feel like I don't know how my entire body weight's going to get lifted up just by my knees. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see, to see that. But as they've been hooking it all up and stuff, it, it feels pretty good. So I'm pretty confident, pretty excited. Yeah. The bench is taken away and she's lifted into the air. Amazing, it feels great. Is it what you thought it was going to be? No, it's not. I thought it would hurt more, but it didn't. Can you feel any pain right now? It just feels cold. Great cold. Yeah. Look, Mum, no hands. <laughs> <laughs> it's absolutely crazy to witness. Daniel's numb to how it looks. Over the years, he's seen countless suspensions. You know, everyone has their quirky things that they like, and everyone's like, that's a bit strange. Um, just some people's are a little bit more quirky. <laughs> Meanwhile, Alice is strung up and ready to go. There's different ones I can move a wee bit, but now I'm just stuck, <laughs> definitely stuck. You're in the hands of the puppeteer. Hell yeah. I trust them with my life. Soon she too is hanging. Alice feels calm and peaceful. It's, it's nice and silent and I'm just sitting here floating around. All the good stuff. Daniel's ecstatic with the girls' reactions. My favourite thing to do is uh, suspend first-timers. They, they always have the biggest smile, you know, they never know what to expect. Um, and then they get in there and they're sort of a bit unsure if they're going to enjoy it or not and then they love it and that just this big smile, this first suspension face is priceless. Now it's Travis's turn. After years of mentally preparing himself for this moment, you can see the joy and excitement on his face as his love of modifications reaches new heights. Beaming from ear to ear, he's on top of the world. This is as good as it gets. His friend and mentor Eden is in control of his ropes, happily swinging him. His skin is taut, the hooks are holding him up. This is unbelievable to watch. Everyone's happy, everyone's safe. Um, but yeah, it's definitely out of this world. <laughs> Travis's partner is sharing his moment with him. It's really awesome to see him so happy. He's wanted to do this for a long time and to see him finally do it, it's pretty amazing. Down on the ground, Nicole still feels no pain. I could have been up there for ages. It was really, it was really good. Yeah. Alice is in the good space as well. Whoa, that's like, I, it just feels like you're just pudding and just <laughs> down onto the floor. But it's great, though. It's amazing what skin can do. How much weight it can hold. I know. It's great fun. <laughs> Travis loved every moment of the experience. That was fucking amazing. I'm sorry I'm not going to cut that, but yeah. Amazing feeling being up there, eh? It's good, good getting your swing on. Why is there no pain? The skin is stretched, so surely it must be at breaking point. 
Dr. Alistair Humphrey wasn't surprised to hear about the amazing things these people were doing to their skin. It's it's very, very strong. It's a, it's a tremendously strong and adaptable substance. It's the, it's the largest organ in the human body um, and it will hold a tremendous amount of weight. That's often surprising and maybe that's people one of the reasons why people like doing it because it's kind of it's kind of you look at it and you're astounded that such a thing could happen. Flesh suspension isn't everyone's cup of tea. These suspendees have found that life never goes back to normal once people learn how they spend their weekends. Yes, yeah, I lost a friend because of this. I did, and he told me that I was crazy, I needed mental help and all those things, but it's just they don't really get it. They're, they're all in their own little world, kind of, they can't see beyond that. I guess looking at it from the outside world, people sort of see it as kind of strange and quite freaky, but you know, that's, we're always going to get that. But most, most of my friends are really supportive and they're like, wow, you, you're crazy, but it's cool. And they're very supportive of it, and that's a good thing, because you know, when you do things like this, you know who your real friends are as well. Coming up, how accepting are Cantabrians when they're confronted with someone with heavy modifications? <laughs> oh, that's creepy. Oh, oh goodness! <laughs> Some of them go in shows and do things, don't they? He's not swinging in the studio, suspended by hooks, Daniel's a keen climber. It's a similar rush and a more conventional hobby. To me it's not as exhilarating, um, but you know, yeah, it's, it's definitely got its aspects of fear and, uh, you know, pushing yourself and pushing your limits and stuff like that. Nicole's here today as well. She's actually Daniel's girlfriend. He's the one who introduced her to the world he loves. <laughs> They say opposites attract. Daniel's modifications can be in your face, whereas Nicole's are more hidden from view. I'm just myself and learning new things. Like Daniel's brought a lot of new and interesting things into my life since I've known him, and that's been pretty cool. It's almost a week since she hung from her knees. She shows me the damage that already looks as though it's fading. Four tiny pinpricks among the pierces ink stains. How have your knees healed over the last week? Pretty good. There's only a few tiny little, little marks left there. No bruising really or anything. It's pretty amazing really. You were hung by your knees. I was hung completely upside down by my knees and this is all that's left to show for it. And what won't fade is the hurtful comments she faced when she told her colleagues about her new hobby. The people that I work with have expressed some of their I can't believe that you did that sort of thing and um, a few people have said that it was disgusting, that I was disgusting um, and I've never really heard anyone say that about Daniel because he looks as though he would do things like that so they're all sort of like, oh well of course you'd do that but then someone who is cute and meek kind of walks in and <laughs> just like, wow, you didn't do that, that's, yeah, so no one expects it and it's more horrific for them I suppose. Daniel wishes people saw his modifications the way he does. If your body's your temple, why not decorate it? <laughs> Back at Restart Mall, Eden tells me when people modify their bodies, they learn to accept not everyone will be excited by their new look. Like I said, there's no point being upset by it. I'm not going to go, oh, people are staring at me, I'm so angry. It's like, I don't care, you know. People are going to stare, of course, you know. But that's what you take on board when you do what I've done. So, yeah, it's not just, oh, it's going to, there'll be no social repercussions whatsoever, because of course there are. We decided to put the theory to the test. Daniel agreed to show off his favourite modification to find out what people really think. <laughs> oh, that's creepy. <laughs> oh, oh, goodness. It's unreal. <laughs> oh, my word, I don't believe that. You've had it cut. Yep. Why? Wow, OK. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I know my granddaughter killed her tongue in, but it's not split like that. <laughs> when confronted with Daniel's tongue, these people were all shocked, but they seemed accepting of his special talent. I think it's amazing. Do what you want to do, it's your body. It's awesome, it's an art. It's just part of culture now, and, and you know, everyone, someone does that everywhere, and, and everyone's entitled to do that, so good on them. Would you say it's disgusting? No, no, but it's odd. 
it's odd. I think I'd sooner see that than a I don't like studs and things. I think. However, after Daniel had left, people weren't holding back with what they truly thought. What would you think about someone who had a forked tongue and horns on his head? <laughs> I think there's something mentally wrong with it potentially. But <laughs> I just think it's unattractive and I just think why would you do it and distort yourself like that? It just doesn't look, doesn't look nice. Well, I think they're defacing themselves, myself, and I think they're foolish. <laughs> Some of them go in shows and do things, don't they? I think, yeah. What, the uh, split tongue show? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Seen it. they do demonstrations. <laughs> the horns are a little bit odd. Obviously, maybe we're getting more and more tolerant, things will get more and more radical. It was an interesting experiment. No one would tell Daniel to his face what they thought of his tongue, but without him in sight, they were happy to speak their mind. I asked one man why that was. Yeah, well, I think if he's here with his tongue, you sort of couldn't say, oh, gee, that looks creepy. You'd say, oh, yeah, that's cool, and walk away. But I think if you had to think about it afterwards, you'd think, oh, no, that's not very nice. Daniel's not bothered by the nasty comments. It, everyone has a different opinion on, look, some people will think it's disgusting, some people will think it's beautiful. Maybe something that they do I'll think is disgusting, but that's just society, isn't it? When I first met Daniel and Eden, I had the same reaction as everyone else. The horns were unusual, the tongue split freaked me out. But I quickly came to realise that this is just how they are. This is their normal, as Daniel put it to me. If our bodies are temples, why shouldn't we be able to decorate them? And that's this week's Street Story.